Have you ever wondered how a mountain range can influence the power dynamics between two of the largest nations on Earth? Indeed, the Himalayas, an imposing natural barrier stretching thousands of kilometers, have been doing just that between India and China. This formidable geographical obstacle sets the stage for what is arguably the world's largest territorial conflict, influencing military and economic strategies and shaping political landscapes. The Himalayas are not just mountains, they are a testament to history, a catalyst for conflict, and a witness to the ebb and flow of power. They have served as the backdrop for historical disputes and continue to cast a long shadow over modern confrontations. In the next few minutes, we will unravel the enigma that is the Himalayan conflict, tracing its roots, understanding its implications, and exploring its potential resolutions. A journey into the past will help us understand the roots of this conflict, so brace yourselves as we travel back in time. Our journey begins in the year 1914, at the heart of the British Empire. This was a time when the sun never set on the British Empire and its influence was felt across the globe. In a bid to secure its Indian frontier, the British Empire drew a line, the McMahon Line, named after Sir Henry McMahon, the then British Foreign Secretary. This line was an attempt to demarcate the border between British India and Tibet. This line, however, was not just a simple stroke on a map. It was a significant geopolitical move that would sow the seeds of future conflict. The McMahon line was drawn during the Simla Accord, a tripartite agreement between British India, Tibet and China. Yet, the Chinese government, feeling sidelined during the negotiations, refused to accept this border demarcation. The line passed through the high ridges of the eastern Himalayas, cutting across the traditional territories of local tribes and the Tibetan plateau. The region of Arunachal Pradesh, which the line encompassed, has been a bone of contention between India and China ever since. This line, drawn in distant London, ignored the complex realities on the ground. It overlooked the intricate network of tribal alliances, the centuries-old trade routes and the delicate balance of power that existed between the local powers. As the British packed their bags and departed from the Indian subcontinent, they left behind a contentious border issue. The McMahon Line, initially a tool to safeguard British interests, became a flashpoint for Indochina relations. The British Empire may have faded into history, but its legacy lingered on in the form of the McMahon Line. This line, drawn on a map over a hundred years ago, continues to be a symbol of unresolved border disputes and geopolitical tension. The British left, but their legacy lingered, setting the stage for a power struggle in the Himalayas. A struggle that continues to define the dynamics of one of the world's most complex territorial conflicts. Fast forward to 1962, the year the dragon breathed fire on the Himalayas. In the midst of the Cold War, tensions between India and China reached a boiling point. The dragon China decided to flex its muscles and launched an invasion, dramatically escalating the conflict over the Aksai Chin region. Aksai Chin, a territory with an average elevation of 17,000 feet and an area about the size of Switzerland, was the bone of contention. The region, though desolate and inhospitable, held immense strategic significance. It was a gateway to the Xinjiang province, a crucial link in China's grand infrastructure project, the Xinjiang-Tibet Highway. The invasion was swift and unexpected. The Indian forces, ill-prepared for the harsh winter and the high-altitude warfare, were caught off guard. The dragon had struck, and it struck hard. By the time the dust settled, China had established control over Aksai Chin. This event, known as the Sino-Indian War of 1962, was a turning point in the Indochina relations. It not only cemented China's presence in Aksai Chin, but also exposed the vulnerabilities of India's frontier defences. It was a wake-up call for India, a realisation that the Himalayas, though a mighty natural barrier, were not an impregnable fortress. The Chinese invasion triggered a series of responses from India. It led to a significant rethinking of India's defence strategies, a boost in military spending, and an emphasis on fortifying the northern border. It also marked the beginning of India's quest for strategic alliances 
to counterbalance China's growing influence. In the grand chessboard of geopolitics, the Chinese invasion of Aksai Chin was a game changer. It was a bold move by the dragon, a move that significantly altered the balance of power in the region. The dragon had made its move and it had gained a foothold in the Himalayas. But the game was far from over. The tiger, India, was not to be outdone. It was time for the tiger to make its move, to respond to the dragon's aggression, to reclaim its position in the power dynamics of the region. The dragon had made its move, but the tiger was not to be outdone. In a world dominated by power games, highways can become game changers. This statement is no truer than in the case of the Himalayan geopolitical tango between India and China. The Chinese mega project belt is an ambitious initiative that includes highways extending into Pakistan. This project isn't merely about constructing roads. It's a strategic maneuver aimed at expanding China's sphere of influence and control. The highways serve as vital arteries, enhancing connectivity, facilitating trade, and importantly, extending China's military reach. But India isn't standing idly by. It has formulated its own counter strategy known as the Diamond Necklace. This approach involves strengthening India's northern border and expanding military and infrastructural alliances. The Diamond Necklace isn't an actual piece of jewellery, of course. It's a metaphor for a network of military bases and infrastructural projects that India is developing around its borders. These projects are like pieces on a strategic chessboard, each move calculated to counter the other's influence. The mega project belt and diamond necklace strategy are more than mere infrastructure development. They are power statements. Yet these strategies are not without their challenges. Building infrastructure in the rugged, inhospitable terrains of the Himalayas is a daunting task. Moreover, these projects are often fraught with diplomatic tensions as they invariably involve neighbouring countries that are caught in the crossfire of this geopolitical tug of war. However, these challenges are also opportunities. The Himalayas, with their daunting peaks and treacherous passes, offer a buffer of sorts. They are a natural fortress that can be leveraged for strategic advantage. Both India and China are acutely aware of this. Hence, their respective strategies reflect a keen understanding of the intricate interplay between geography and power. They are not merely reacting to each other's moves, but are proactively shaping the geopolitical landscape to their advantage. With every stone laid on these projects, the stakes were raised. The Himalayan geopolitical conflict is not just about territory, it's about power, influence and the strategic control of the world's highest mountain range. In the Game of Thrones, the high ground often holds the key. This adage holds true in the real-world geopolitical conflict between India and China, where the Himalayas' high ground shapes the military strategies of both nations. The Himalayas, with their towering peaks and treacherous terrain, present a formidable natural barrier that significantly complicates military operations. Conventional warfare in such a landscape is a daunting prospect. It's not just about having the biggest army or the most advanced weaponry, but rather it's about mastering the art of mountain warfare. The mountains limit the possibilities of large-scale troop movements, making it challenging for either nation to launch a full-scale invasion. It's a game of positioning, where controlling key passes and heights becomes crucial. Both India and China have fortified their positions along the disputed border. With troops stationed at high altitudes, braving harsh weather conditions and inhospitable terrain. But the battle is not just about physical control. In this strategic game, infrastructure becomes a pawn. Roads, highways and rail lines etched into the mountains are of immense strategic importance. They are the lifelines that ensure the smooth movement of troops and supplies, enabling the nations to maintain their presence at these high altitudes. China's construction of highways in the Aksai Chin region and India's road building efforts along the border demonstrate how infrastructure warfare is playing out in the Himalayas. These projects are not just about improving connectivity, they are strategic moves designed to strengthen each nation's hold over the disputed territories. Moreover, the Himalayas' geography has also prompted a shift in military focus towards non conventional means. Cyber warfare, satellite surveillance and drones are becoming increasingly important in this high-altitude standoff. 
These technology-driven strategies allow the nations to monitor each other's movements and fortifications without physically crossing the treacherous mountain passes. In conclusion, the Himalaya's immense geography shapes the military strategies of India and China in profound ways. It's a complex dance of power and influence played out on the world's highest battlefield. The mountains stood tall, silently shaping the strategies of these two giants. Mountains may be the fortress, but trade routes are the lifelines. With this in mind, let's navigate the labyrinth of geopolitical power play in the Himalayan region. The Himalayas, majestic as they are, have become a theatre for a new kind of warfare, one that is fought not with bullets and bombs, but with roads, ports and railways. It's a game of infrastructure and influence, where the players are not just India and China, but also the neighbouring countries caught in the crossfire. China, in its quest for dominance, has embarked on a journey of monumental proportions. This journey, often referred to as the Belt and Road Initiative, is a strategic play to connect China with the rest of Asia, Europe and Africa via a network of roadways, railways and maritime routes. The aim? To assert its influence and control over the trade routes that are the lifelines of the global economy. But not so fast, China. India is not a bystander in this game. Conscious of the growing Chinese influence in its neighbourhood, India has been strengthening its alliances and forging new ones. Its Look East policy is a strategic move to counterbalance China by bolstering relations with Southeast Asia and East Asia. Yet the Himalayas, the towering fortress, are both a boon and a bane. While they provide a natural defence, they also pose a significant challenge to infrastructural development. This is where India's Act East policy comes into play an attempt to establish strategic military bases and gain access to crucial ports in the region. The expansion of Chinese infrastructure in countries neighbouring India, such as Sri Lanka and Myanmar, and India's efforts to counterbalance this, presents a complex tableau. It's a game of chess, with the Himalayas as the board and trade routes as the pieces. In this game of geopolitical tug-of-war, the Himalayas are not just a natural barrier, but a symbol of the ongoing power dynamics between two of the world's most populous countries. And in this race for control, trade routes have become the new battleground. In the race for control, trade routes became the new battleground. In a world where geography shapes choices, challenges often bring opportunities. Welcome to the Himalayan chessboard, where every mountain pass, every river bend becomes a square in a high-stakes game of geopolitical strategy. The players, two of the world's most populous nations, India and China. Let's look at an interesting move on this board. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPESI. This ambitious project, part of China's broader Belt and Road Initiative, seeks to connect Guadaport in southwestern Pakistan with China's northwestern region of Xinjiang, via a network of highways, railways and pipelines. It's a classic example of using geography to one's advantage. By securing a direct route to the Arabian Sea, China bypasses the strategically vulnerable Strait of Malacca. It's a bold move, but not without its own set of challenges, such as the unstable political climate in Pakistan and the disputed status of Gilgit-Baltistan. So how does India respond to this move? By developing its own strategic partnerships. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or QUAD, is one such initiative, where India has joined forces with the United States, Japan and Australia. This alliance seeks to counterbalance China's increasing presence in the Indian Ocean and the Indo-Pacific region. It's a way for India to say, your move, China. But India has its eye on other squares too. It's been strengthening ties with countries like Iran and Afghanistan, opening up alternative routes to Central Asia. It's also been investing heavily in its own infrastructure along the Himalayan border, fortifying its position against any potential threats. So what does all this mean? It's clear that the Himalayas continue to shape the geopolitical strategies of both India and China. Every road built, every alliance formed, is a move on this chessboard. The stakes are high, but so are the potential rewards. And that's the beauty of this geopolitical chess game. It's not just about the pieces on the board, but also the minds behind them. It's a dance of strategy and influence, where every move matters, every challenge is an opportunity, and the game is always in flux. 
Every challenge faced on this geopolitical chessboard is an opportunity for a strategic move. As we come to the end of our journey, we realize how mountains can shape power dynamics. The Himalayas, a natural barrier between India and China, have played an integral role in the geopolitical conflict that's been unfolding since the early 20th century. This mountain range, stretching thousands of kilometers, has been a canvas for both historical and modern disputes, shaping military and economic strategies for both nations. The roots of this conflict trace back to 1914, with the British Empire's attempt to demarcate the border between India and Tibet through the McMahon Line. Fast forward to 1962, when China established control over Aksai Chin, and we see how the Himalayas have been the stage for a series of intense confrontations. Through the lens of infrastructure and trade, the Himalayas are both a fortress and a hurdle. China's mega project belt, a network of highways stretching into Pakistan, and India's diamond necklace strategy, aimed at strengthening its northern border, are both testaments to this. These projects are chess pieces in a complex game of influence where physical control is often secondary to economic and political control. The challenging terrain of the Himalayas complicates military operations, underscoring the importance of positioning and infrastructure warfare. Ports, highways and railways are not just modes of transport, but strategic assets in this broader geopolitical game. Efforts to expand influence beyond the Himalayas are also evident. China's infrastructure projects in countries neighboring India, such as Sri Lanka and Myanmar, and India's attempts to secure strategic military bases reflect a complex web of power dynamics. Initiatives like the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and India's strategic partnerships are clear indications of how geography shapes political and economic choices. The Himalayas, standing tall and majestic, silently continue to shape the power dynamics between these two Asian giants. The question is, what will be their next move?